Wix Studio, the platform for agencies and enterprises to manage clients and projects with max efficiency. Sharing Wix's SEO tech to help you drive growth. Fix errors, waste, and issues in a couple of clicks. Get alerted whenever you're off track. Sign up at trueclicks.com. Hello, hello, everyone. You can hear me back there. So welcome to this afternoon's session. I'll be your moderator. Uh, if you just came from lunch outside, don't forget to turn your phones off or put it on silent mode. Thank you. And also, please occupy the front seat so all the people on the line coming in can actually sit there once they, let, they arrive. And so we have three sessions uh, now. Uh, the first session will be Miguel Varela. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and so I'll jump in, right into it. Welcome, Miguel. <laughs> oh, I forgot to present myself. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Miguel Varela works for a unique SEO agency in Lisbon, Portugal. And he's the managing director. And he's going to talk about talent retention and turnover. Here I am. So uh, welcome, everyone. I don't have the deck uh, there uploaded yet, but you can all just send me an email. I'll put my contacts in the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions or if you want to know more, I'll, I'll have some stuff here that will have a, a back link so you can see it after. So turnover rates in agencies, there's a lot of studies. This is something uh, trendy and something that uh, all agency owners and managers are worried about. Uh, I would say the average is around 18 to 30 percent. It varies a lot. So if you are in between those brackets, uh, you're doing an average, which is good. I don't know. Uh, but the idea is that retaining talent is super important, especially because uh, hiring is also becoming a problem. And so some years ago, what agencies perceived the talent, this is, by the way, AI generation from a talented marketeer from the 80s, looks amazing. Uh, university degree, definitely not in fashion anymore, at least for SEO industry, because everything is going so fast. But leadership is still there in initiative. And you should be, at the time, expert in something that right now you need to be expert in a lot of things. So now you sell as a client and as an agency, you sell to the whole world. There's different time zones, different religions, different cultures. So if you are someone well-traveled who can adapt, uh, you have a big uh, advantage. Also, technology is evolving really fast, so you need to keep up with it, and you need to learn fast as well. So this changed a lot since the uh, last few years. And so I was talking about uh, hiring. Hiring is a big issue. I'm going to talk more about it. But basically, there's a big gap right now between uh, demand and, and, and supply in terms of people with expertise. And so SEO is something relatively new. And so there's a big war, or not a big war, not like be dramatic, but there's a war for talent. And uh, you as an employee, so if, if you're the employee side, you have an advantage to choose where you want to go. But it's definitely something for agencies to, to look for. So key factors influencing this. Uh, again, a few years ago, we have salary. We had uh, job stability, career advancement, and although salary and career advancement are still there, uh, job stability not so much anymore. And now you have a lot of different things. So nothing new to you since COVID, remote work and hybrid work and all these things came into play. And so people now want different things. So this is an, there's a lot of studies on this. This is a fun one, I thought, because above salary, you actually have flexible work. And this goes, the list goes on. And now with new generations, this gap between the old people like me and what, how you used to manage is going to, to shift. Uh, and speaking of Generation Z and millennials, there's no way to, to fight the new needs. Uh, you need to embrace them and, and change accordingly. And so, as you can see from the different studies, Higher salary is no more the, the thing. So you just can't come to the table and say, OK, I'll, I'll pay you more, you stay. Uh, while before, this might work. Uh, but you're also not competing only with local agencies. So if you're in the UK, you're not competing with local agencies in the UK. Uh, we had people leave to remote agencies. If you're in California, you can pay maybe the double of what we can pay in Lisbon. So you need to, you need to have this in mind, because salary, although it's not the main goal, you need to really make sure you're still inside some brackets. Otherwise, 
but it's, it's a global fight right now. So I'll talk a bit about our case, really briefly. It is not that interesting, but just so you know, we've been there. Uh, we asked the, comp the company guys to make some photos representing <laughs> the slides. This is what they come up with. But 2021, we start growing fast. Uh, we were a relatively very small agency. Clients came to the door. We needed to get things going. And we started hiring maybe not the right fit at what we thought it was the right people, but we needed to get something going. This generated a big problem with culture. Uh, senior people did not have time anymore to train new people because they were doing client work. Uh, I think we've all been there at some point. Uh, but people got in, didn't have proper training, didn't have, we, we skipped some processes and we lost, uh, 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 talent started to leave. Uh, two of those people are actually right here in the room. They left. <laughs> um, they left to, one to a remote agency in the US, one in the bigger agency in Portugal. But the good news is we got them back. Uh, one of them now it's a head of SEO and one is a CMO, so good luck with that. And how did we do it to, to get them back? That's what I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. There's definitely lessons to be learned, so let's jump into it. Uh, I put small agencies here, but this applies to big ones. I'm assuming bigger agencies already have a good HR department that looks into this. If they don't, then they should. Um, recruiting. So I think one of the issues is not being upfront with when you're recruiting, especially if you're a small agency. Sometimes you want to over, you oversell yourself as an agency. I did that a lot in the past, and now uh, we stopped doing that. That means, I can give you an example. Uh, we don't have a very good culture for training. We're not the, the agency where you get in and you have a training plan categorized with month by month, you're gonna learn this and you have these goals. We don't, so people need to know that once they go in, uh, you're gonna have all the help they need. They can discuss with a lot of people. People love SEO, but you'll be thrown at, you can try, we give you all the tools, you can try at will, but you will be a learning process mostly on your own. Doesn't mean you don't, you're not supported, but you don't have a training plan. And before we didn't do this, so we had a lot of issues with that. Um, so be, front, be really front, uh, upfront of how you deal with, with these things and who you actually are and who you're not. Another thing to be aware is job hopping profiles. I'm not saying everyone who has this, this CV uh, is in trouble or you shouldn't hire. I'm just saying have special care. And actually, if you like the person, interview them and see what's going on. Why are they changing so much? Because if I, if I see this, is this a red flag for me? If the person, sometimes I have people with 25 years and they have like 10 jobs already up to the to manager and look, okay, you know eight months here, six months there, uh, are they gonna stay with us at least a year? Because then I'll, I'll have to go back to hiring. Uh, and so the process goes again. And it's terrible for culture. <coughs> People leaving is always bad either way. Uh, you never, sometimes you don't know why they're leaving. Um, one of the reasons I get uh, when, when I'm interviewing people to apply for our jobs uh, is why they're changing, why they're leaving the job where they are now. It's usually not salary, it's usually being bored or stagnated. So I'll, I'll talk a bit more about this, but this is really the point where the new generation uh, feels they need something, something different. And this goes to motivation uh, a lot. So you all know what exit interviews are. When people leave, I'm out, you ask them, okay, why did you leave? What can we learn? What can we improve? Maybe give them a bit more salary for them to stay. But actually, you should do also stay interviews. So stay interviews, if you don't know what it is, there's a, there's a link there, again, in the presentation for all the people out there uh, in the back. Maybe you can see the link, sorry. Um, you can search for it. Basically, you need to check how you're going, what's anything good, anything wrong, where can we improve? And, uh, and also, importantly, where do you want to grow? Because this year, you might want something, and then you had a kid, uh, you got married, you, you want to move somewhere and be remote because you're from outside the country. Many things can change. So you should be aware of what's going on. Uh, and also, the, the problem with the stay interviews is that it should be done not, not by a line manager or your CEO because they will say everything is okay because they have a lot to lose, uh, not with the exit interviews, but with the stay interviews. So in a bigger agency, you should have an HR department to actually have someone neutral 
So if you have a small agency, find that person that maybe it's a mentor, someone that can speak without them having the, the, the fear of talking openly about it. Right. Uh, but if you have a small company, you cannot do that. This helps as well. You can have an anonymous pulse. We do that. We use a, a Slack uh, at, at one of the tools at our agency. It has something integrated for that. But there's loads on the market you can use. Basically, each month people do uh, have a few questions they can answer. They know it's anonymous, so they can complain uh, as long as uh, what they want. The problem is anonymous. So you get a feeling for the whole culture of the agency as a whole. You don't know who's feeling bad. If, if there's someone who clearly is not okay, you don't know who it is. Well, with the stay interview, you can actually go and address that person. But it's better than, than nothing. And also quite quitting, if you didn't heard about it, it's very trendy as well. You should have a feeling of how things going on the agency. If someone was excited before and was excelling at their work and now they're not, or they're shy and then they stop participating somehow. If you have a small agency up to 50 people, you get this feeling on a daily basis. You know something is wrong, and then you can address is something personal. Sometimes it is, it's OK. But sometimes it's not. Uh, and you need to find a way to see what's going on. Um, the other thing I've learned is that, especially good, good news for small agencies, not everyone wants to, to grow up and open their own agency or be a CEO. Uh, sometimes people, uh, their ambition is to learn more we have a good case here in the, in, in, we forced him to be manager, but he didn't like it. But, but he's doing a great job. But uh, you know, sometimes they can learn different things. So if you have PPC in your agency, maybe you know, people learned SEO, got to a point where they're not learning so much now, and they're doing mentorship. Now they, they can learn a new thing inside the agency and have a broader spectrum, spectrum. That might help them in the future to get a better job if they decide to move. Let's hope not. And, Project leadership uh, opportunities, if you have juniors in your, um, in your agency, maybe they cannot go and be managers already, but maybe you can give them a project to manage themselves, and they can practice, and they can start uh, feeling the, having the feeling of being a manager in a, in a smaller project. And, and that gives a bit of empowerment as well. So another thing you should do, and this is usually uh, not, not so much seen, is a uh, prioritize uh, selling yourself also to employees, not only for clients. So we all, at some point, use social media to empower the agency for, for clients. But you should, besides brand, to look at, uh, at, at employers as well. And uh, many studies show how now people, especially Generation Z, are looking at social media also to choose where they're going to work for. So if they go there and there's just a bunch of old people sitting in the room, they might not want to be there because it's not fun. All the things we, we're going to see, um, we've seen already and going to see more. So how can you do that? How can you do that? A bit similar to, to what you already do for your brand. Uh, so I would put it in three buckets. Entertainment, education, inspiration. Entertainment is easy, especially the younger members of the team will love to you know, make a video of people on pizza day and have a beer in their hands and blah, blah. That's nice. Uh, it shows that the office is fun and people are relaxed and it's a nice place to work for. Uh, you have education, obviously. We already do this when we do inbound marketing. Say on LinkedIn, you publish a white paper or an article in depth about something. Basically show you're an expert in what you're doing and your agency knows what's, what it's doing. And the one that's usually not so, which is a bit overlooked, is inspiration. So inspiration is something, did you win a prize? Did you come to write an SEO? Did you, if you're an employee, okay, these guys go to conferences, maybe that's a nice thing. I would like a company who take me to conferences or team buildings or um, you do some nonprofit uh, pro bono work. So they have a, a, a culture, they have a vision, they have a, something to stand for. And that's something that usually, I don't see that so much. We didn't do that in the past so much. We're trying to do it now. And it's something really important. Sometimes this last one is the most important for inspiration for people to want to work with you. Then the other thing is that SEO is very, it's very new. So you tend to hire a lot of young people. But when you get a lot of Generation Z together, you know, the expectations are also sometimes harder to meet. Uh, having older people, it's nice. Maybe not that old as this guy, but 
You can, you can have uh, people bring stability. They, maybe they don't want to move a job or they don't have the ambition to, to grow so fast because now they have a family and they're just nice, they, they're well treated, they want to stay. And this gives a bring of balance to the team. You cannot have just all stars. You can, but it's very hard to manage just the all star team. You need, doesn't mean they're not all stars. It just means you have a bit more people who want, uh, and then some, okay, you know, take it easy, we're going there. So um, mentorships also work good. This gives you the, uh, the possibility of empowering the older people in the agency because every time you're helping someone, you also feeling a bit empowered yourself and you're sharing this knowledge uh, is something good for everyone, especially the younger members who get someone they can look up to and, and learn from, but also require uh, go to if they need something or they need some help, especially in smaller agencies where you cannot go to the CEO because you don't feel uh, you know, comfortable. And I know you shouldn't have bullet points on presentations, so I'm not going to read those, but they're, they're there. Uh, because you're competing on a global perspective against bigger agencies, and I gave you an example, you can be in San Francisco, big agency, rec recruiting someone in Lisbon on a small agency. I mean, how can I compete with, with that? They have a bigger salary, they have a lot of conditions, I don't. Um, they might take everyone to the Bahamas once a year. I cannot do that. So you need to find what is it that you have that, that the employees can, can look for. Uh, actually, one of the things that, that I have when people apply for our jobs, um, that is interesting is that sometimes they have bigger agencies and come to a small agency. I say, well, aren't you feeling you're going down in your career path? I mean, we're really small, although we have some big clients, but we're smaller. And one of the things is, is flexibility, is uh, being, things are slow on a big agency. Uh, decision takes time, needs to go all the way up and back down. They can implement things faster. They can help, oh, the PPC department needs some help today, and, and you can learn cross uh, knowledge inside the agency. So you have good things there that can, that can stand for you as well. Uh, and uh, recognition. Uh, I think in our agency we, we suffer from this problem. I'm trying to fix it as well, which is it's something so easy. And we, we very often can very easily tell what's wrong, but we, we don't praise people so much. And we should much more often. Uh, and so when you're having a one-to-one -one or or not even in one-to-one -one or, or public, you should actually you know, recognize people for their work. Uh, everyone goes to complain on a restaurant, but no one goes there and just say, oh man, it was amazing. Just, or you see Amazon reviews, it's all bad, right? So how can you do that? Well, nothing new. You can do performance reviews, very important. Feedback sessions, uh, goal setting discussions. Basically, uh, sitting with the person or sitting with each one and make sure we all align the agency and the employee. Bonus and incentives are always nothing new as well. You should always have KPIs, something we only implementing this year. KPIs are important because people can understand also where they're going and what they need to do to excel. Uh, and this is very important. In the past, we had people lost. They were doing a great job, but you never know, am I doing a great job or not? <laughs> maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I mean, compared to this guy, I am. He's really slow, but maybe he's not what they're expecting from me. So having clear role expectations is something really, really important. And also people knowing in, in your agency what success looks like. Because it, this it can change from job to job a lot. So uh, KPI's goals, I would, I would focus on the what the sex lo success looks like. And so, one minute. Takeaway is talent rotation is evolving really fast, uh, as fast as digital marketing, and you cannot just think that things will stay the same. I know a lot of uh, other managers who are older than me even, and they oh, Generation Z, and now they want this and that. In my time, I didn't you know, just sit down and shut up. And <laughs> this is not gonna be different. This is, this is just gonna go, people will have different needs. Uh, a new generation will come after Generation Z, and people need to understand, especially older managers, that things are evolving and they need to evolve as well. Otherwise, just they'll get older and older and things won't work. And uh, you have my email there. You can ask me anything. Thank you.
monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. Demand Sphere. Limitless visual insights from the SERPs. Unlimited dashboards and users. Easy to use and easy to scale your growth to new levels.